Hey guys, in the last video we uh, created this cube, our little 5x5x5 five by five by five building, quote unquote. And uh, now we are actually going to start transforming this building and making it so that way we can walk inside, because right now it's a solid cube. Um, and that's actually going to be the first thing that we do. So let's go back to the construction script. And we have our little for loop thing here. Um, so now we're actually going to build a whole bunch of conditional statements. And these conditional statements have to come before this um, for it to actually work. So, <clears throat> so to do that, and also since we're not really using any form of the make transform, I'm going to just plug this to this and it'll automatically generate just like a very basic transform. Cause we're not needing to adjust rotation or anything. Um, now, all of our conditional statements have to come before we actually create the um, this index, or this, not index, our instance mesh. So we're actually going to move this all the way over here, because we won't be needing it. And we're going to break this. Um, leave this one connected because we do want it to still recognize where in this uh, little box thing it is um, but we we want to add some conditional statements so the first thing we're going to do is make our thing hollow and if you think about it all that really means is we wanted to take the first position of the X uh, let me bring this back to the table. We want to do the first... Um, we have our X, Y, and Z over here. Um, we want to take only this point, this point, this point, and this point to actually create it. So if you were to draw it out, we have a, a cube. These points would also be considered that. So we're taking the extremes of the categories. Now if we look at our little for loop, what do the extremes of the categories actually mean? Well, it would be the first index and the last index, right? So um, we're basically saying if this index, or if this index that's being spit out, if it's zero, or if this index is equal to the max element, right? So that is essentially what um, what we're going to be doing for our <coughs> for our um, nested for loops. Um, and also note that we're not use, actually using the max z, we're using the last index. So it's literally just the max z minus one. So let's go ahead and just create const or like actual variables that relate to this. We need three of them. So the first one let's call um, max x element. Second one <clears throat> do it max y element and actually these don't necessarily need to be public and the third one will be the max z element okay and uh, all we're doing is setting these to it so we go to set um, and let's just go like that plug that in there Okay, and uh, do that for the Y element. Plug this here, and do this for the Z element. Okay, so now that we have that, we have our little sets over here. Um, now we get to create our very 
conditional statement. <laughs> Okay, um, so first thing that we're going to do is we're actually we're going to take this. I'll I'll make it down here, but we need this, and we need to make say if this is equal to to zero, or if so or. If this is equal to our max x element, this one, if it's equal to our max x element, to, um, and then once we plug this into an if statement, I'm I'm going to show you what each one does. So we do an if we plug the um, the loop, which is coming off of this one now, into here. We say it's true. Now watch what happens. See how currently we have the cube? When I hit compile, notice that only the far left and the far right in the x-axis is uh, highlighted. Everything else is deleted because we didn't say, now do it for the y, now do it for the z. And that's essentially what we're going to be doing. So back to the construction script. And actually, I'm going to do something a little bit different by taking this and creating a node because we are going to have a lot of strings everywhere. So this is something that you probably want to do. There we go. It means exactly the same thing. Um, okay. So we have this. Now we're going to we're going to do the exact same thing for all three of them. Um, the only difference is that we're going to be a using the y and z uh, elements like this and b we're going to be using the different indexes so that it counts for the ones that it's supposed to count um, so adding the reroute over here, and I'm going to add a reroute over here. And then just plug it in. Okay. Now that we have those, um, we can't necessarily just plug it like that. Well, no, we can't. Okay. Uh, so we need to create another OR statement for this. So we go to OR, plug in these two OR statements, and then plug this one in here. And then you'll see, go back to the viewport, it'll create the X and the Y, and we'll have kind of a donut shape where the Zs are not considered yet because we didn't plug those in. So now we're going to do it for the Z, and you'll see it's now a closed in box. Just click on Add Pin and then put that there. And there you go. We have a little uh, cube. And you can see that now we have this actual inside. Um, so let's do something fun and just grab. Oh, I clicked on the wrong thing. Um, let's go to our building. Just drag it in because now we have an actual object that we're using, modifying. It looks kind of cool, I guess. Um, and also let's make these components bigger. Now this part is very cool. Because it's made public, you can modify it here. So let's make it a 10. And notice that the, the, the uh, dimensions automatically change. Make it a 10 by 10 by 10. 
and everything still works with our definition and then you can see you can actually run inside and physics mostly works and yeah so this is the second step to building this building next we're going to include floors and then we're going to include windows and then we're going to make the windows all cool looking and then I'll show you how to get an elevator. Alright, stay tuned.